and she started experiencing this kind of uh, unique experience of shedding blood uh, during uh, on t uh, eve of Thursday. Yes, every week. Yes, every week. I experienced a very special perfume. She told me Jesus was there. A Kenyan Catholic nun named Sister Anna Ali is said to have had an extraordinary experience where she saw, spoke, and even took pictures of Jesus. The story begins in Kipkelion where she was born and grew up facing several health challenges, but eventually she got healed. She later joined the convent with an intention of becoming a Catholic nun and thus left Kenya for Rome. When I first heard the story of Sister Anna Ali, I got intrigued because if what she says about her experiences is approved and verified by the Catholic Church, she could be the first Kenyan born and raised to be canonized a saint. And so we decided to come here at Burnt Forest where she has been laid to rest to talk to people who knew her and lived with her. And today we also get to talk to the Bishop of the Catholic Church in charge of this region so he can explain to us where this process has gotten so far. Sister Anne was my very good sister, not only a sister but a friend to me, mm. to live with Sister Anne from my childhood. So that's a privilege and I cannot take it for granted that we grew in the same home and we were breastfeeded in the same breast. <laughs> she is your sister. We, yes, we ate together, we grew together. Mm -hmm. And because I'm young, we are five in the family. Sister Anne is the first born, Sister Anne Ali of the Mosul Eucharist. Second born is Abdul Rahman Ali, and then Caroline Elungata, and then followed by Mariam yes, Wamai, <laughs> and then we have Hamisi Ali. So even from what I've just said, you know, if she was the first born, she used to cook for me. She carried me one time. She mm -hmm. used to be, she was there taking care of us. So that's why I count it as a privilege. Yeah? Wow. As I come here, it's more than that because I know her in a special way. There's something interesting about the names that you shared growing up. I've had Abdul, I've had Hadija. Mm -hmm. Is there any significance of these names? They are very much okay. Islam. Our father was a Muslim. Okay. And we thank God for our late father Ali Abraham and Abrahman. And may his soul rest in eternal peace. Ali was a very good father to us. He married my mother when he was a Muslim, and he married mom when she was a Christian. She was married as a Christian. And when they started their journey in marriage, they respected one another. My father knew he was a Muslim and he could not change his religion. And my mom, mother was a Christian and she could not change her religion. So they lived together respecting one another. So we were born out of that marriage that they respected one another. So as we grew, uh, it was, uh, we were given freedom to decide where we want to follow. If you want to follow that Muslim, you could follow. There was no restriction. If you want to follow ma my mother, my mother is called Priska Nyambura. Mm. So if you want to follow her, you, we had a choice. Hadija decided to follow my dad. Wow. Religion. She was a Muslim for some time, but uh, for some time, because a time came when she converted and she became a Christian. So I really thank God because we won <laughs> with the mom. Eh? Yeah, you got to add more. Yeah. Yeah. At what point did you notice that your sister was different mm -hmm. when, when growing up? She okay, when things? she was in secondary school, I mm -hmm. remember there was a time she used to come at home many times. She, uh, she would, uh, it started with her eyes sometimes. Her eyes started bringing problem when she was in a school in Kakamega called Mukumo. I, I remember that's where she started. And then she came home and uh, it was said she had her eyes were really aching. And so she came back home. So sometimes she could get sick and they could not understand the sickness, sometimes headache. So I remember there are those healthy problems that made her to come back home. Mm -hmm. Her health had really deteriorated. Mm. Why am I saying her health had deteriorated? Because it was not only the eyes now, because at least she got glasses that by that time. But now her her her, uh, her fingers, 
nails had started developing some wounds, eh? mm-hmm. and this wood had started developing uh, pus, and sometimes it would ache her. Even the the nails started coming out. Mm-hmm. There were wounds all over her fingers. Eh? So this that was something very strange to us, eh? and this extended even to her toes. Eh? A time came again eh, on her palm of her hand. Again, there were wounds. Eh? A time came again, she had a very big wood in her uh, uh, here. So uh, it was a problem, eh? and I can say it was not easy for us taking care of her. That time she was in Taita Toita. Now it was not easy. Mm-hmm. So because of that, our parish priest was very good and he was concerned the distance that sister used to cover, and she was in. So that time they decided she go to call Kor- girls. That's where she was taken uh, because it was a mission school. So she went to Koru Girls, mm-hmm. and that's where now God helped her until she finished her form four. Mm-hmm. That time it was all level those days. Eh? That was primary seven years, and then in secondary school four years. Uh-huh. Yes. At what point did she join the the religious? Uh, she joined religious in 1986, toward the end of the year. Mm-hmm. That is when she went uh, to join religious. But before that, mm-hmm. uh, sister had a really desire to serve God in her life as a religious. She had walked to so many convents eh, looking for a place where she could go and join. But I think some of them it was a challenge because they could not take a sick girl Ah. in their convent so it was hard for her to be taken uh, until one time we thank god there was a healing mass in Nairobi, where she went and she received her healing and after receiving her healing i think that's now where her journey of religious life started because after that it didn't take long that was in 1983 yeah? and then from there you can see the, the, uh, the journey now i can say started for her now becoming a religious system. And uh, it really started because uh, she was able to go to Rome in Italy, where there was a new congregation that was being started and she joined it, eh? the Pious Union. Uh, That is uh, a congregation where she she joined uh, the Good Shepherd. Eh, nimejua mtawa sister Anne Ali tulika na yeye kwa miaka mitano na wakati ulikuwa ukishinda alikuwa ki experience hizi visions na alikuwa pia ki bleed every kwanza kabisa sikuwa najua eh, maajabu ambayo alikuwa anapata mm-hmm. sasa siku moja alhamisi ingawa alikuwa amependa kuomba sana mara ameenda kwa chapel anaomba tunafanywa misa kila siku pale kwa chapel usiku halali alikuwa naomba mm. e, anaomba hakuwa na lala alafu sasa siku moja alhamisi nikaenda kwa kwa chumba chake cha kulala nikaweza kumuuliza ni kwa nini haamki tunywe chai akanieleza atakuja e, atanipata tu sebuleni pale lakini mm. chenye niliona ni chenye sijaoiona maisha yangu niliona akilia damu hapa hivi damu ilikuwa inatiririka saa zingine najichora msalaba huku kwa vidole damu zilikuwa inatoka na kwa vidole vya mguu ingawa pale alikuwa ameweka elastoplast alikuwa amefunga nikashtuka lakini sikumwambia hapo ndipo aliponiambia anajua ninashtuka na ninashangaa nikamwambia sister kabisa mimi sijaoiona hivi nashangaa kunaendaje sijaiona hivi akaniambia yeye huwa naona Yesu mimi kusikia Yesu sasa ni, sasa hapo nikachanganyikiwa hata ni, nikamwambia sasa mimi nitaenda nyumbani juu sijaiona maneno kama hayo e, akaniambia nisijali akaniletea vitabu nisome nikaweza kusoma hata sikuwa nasoma tu ni kuangalia tu hadi hadi picha na angalia akaniambia atanielezea zaidi ndipo siku moja eh, Mariamu akaja dada yake makawa wananielezea kidogo 
So in that room, what I can say on that day, when I went to check up, I was so shocked mm -hmm. to find what was happening because I found uh, some clothes, her bedding were full of blood. Mm -hmm. And uh, I remember one time when she called me, by that time she had now wiped her tears, but I could see the princess of clothes that were full of blood. She told me, come and take a photo. So we took a photo when she was in her bed that time. And when I look at that photo, you it remember. reminds me. You're the one who took that photo of her. My brother took it because I was holding, I could not take the photo, but we used her camera. She had a camera. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. She did take photos of Jesus when he appeared to her. Do you have the cameras that she used? Or do you no, know the camera that we are used to take uh, the photo of our adorable Jesus, mm -hmm. the adorable Jesus? have been preserved by the church. Why is that? Mm -hmm. Pardon? Why is that? Why do you think this has happened? You know, when something like that happened, okay. extraordinary, mm -hmm. I'm telling you, Sister Anna was a gift to the church. Yes. Even though she belonged to the family, but she, God had prepared her for the church. Mm -hmm. She's a great gift to the church. And that time she belonged to the church. Whatever was happening, she had already been married by the church. Yes. So the church is the custodian of all what she was using. Yes. Mm -hmm. Because she belonged to the church. Like they are married now. So we are married, that's where my, all my things are. That's, <laughs> that's so true. That's so true. Mm -hmm. All right. So after she struggled with this illness mm -hmm. and um, struggled also with the bleeding every week, mm -hmm. every Thursday. What happened towards the end of her life? Did she know? She, did she talk to people about what her thoughts were, what were her feelings about all these experiences? When this miracle started happening, eh, uh, and especially especially the one where our ador the adorable Jesus appeared to her, there was a time when, when you read the Divine Appeal, there's a book, you'll find that Jesus appeared to Sister, and this is where she was instructed to write the messages from the adorable Jesus. And uh, the messages now that she used to write, you know, she used to pass it to her, uh, her spiritual director by that time. So from that time, you know, there are th those messages now spread because uh, these messages were printed. And after they were printed, uh, the message, now the book reached us here in Kenya. Mm -hmm. And you were told, oh, sister, uh, she she's experiencing the, uh, her life now is different what she's experiencing and uh, sh she's experiencing some ex uh, ordinary things mm -hmm. first time i met was in rome and even at that time she had the reputation really of being a, a mystic wow yeah even at that time and mm -hmm. uh, uh, so then later on she came she was welcomed by the late Bishop Cornelius Corin, who was the Bishop of Eldery Diocese. And she actually stayed in this house here. Wow. Sister Anna stayed here for many years. And Bishop uh, Cornelius Corin was like a spiritual director and really, and also a protector. She, mm -hmm. He took care of her uh, for many years until, until when she died. And she died also in this uh, Diocese of Eldoret. And now she's buried in uh, Barn Forest Parish. Mm -hmm. Yes. In the Catholic Church, we have uh, what we call hierarchy. Okay. And this is uh, the order of uh, holy orders. Uh, when I put it that way. Mm -hmm. uh, in the Catholic Church, we have uh, Pope as the head of the church. is uh, the one in charge. And we have also uh, the what we call the cardinals. Cardinals, they are there also. Mm -hmm. uh, they are bishops. Uh, cardinals are also bishops. Uh, so we have said uh, there's Pope. Then we have cardinals. Uh, cardinals. Then we have archbishops. Okay. Then uh, uh, we have bishops now, mm -hmm. then we have priests, and then we have deacons. Okay. If you see uh, that hierarchy, all of them, they are ordained. 
their 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 clergy. Mm -hmm. Yes. Uh, Banfors has been a very special uh, place. Uh, this is the re uh, the reason is that uh, because of uh, this sister by the name Sister Anne Ali uh, of the most holy Eucharist at the moment because I think that is uh, she's known by that name. Mm -hmm. uh, she lived in this parish and she stayed here for some time. And the unique thing is that after um, her death, uh, she was buried here. Okay. If you could see from the other side, mm -hmm. uh, she was laid here. And this place has been really a place whereby uh, people come and they want to know more about Sister Anne Ali because you, she was a unique uh, nun in the Catholic Church mm -hmm. uh, because she had a special connection with uh, the presence of Jesus in the Blessed Sacrament. And she could really experience uh, on, uh, that, that means on Wednesdays, it was uh, Thursday at night, she could experience uh, this encounter with, the, with Jesus, uh, the adorable Jesus. And also, she could also have this unique experience of uh, uh, shedding blood at night. And that experience started, she always says in her book, uh, especially the Divine Appeal, that she started during the Corpus Christi uh, while she was in Rome. Mm -hmm. And she started experiencing this kind of uh, unique experience of shedding blood uh, during uh, on th uh, eve of Thursday, yes. Every put, week? Yes, every week. She yeah. would bleed through her eyes or? Yes, it's through her eyes. Mm -hmm. And if you can see from the, uh, her photos, you could just, you can see clearly mm -hmm. that she was really uh, shedding this kind of, uh, sh this blood mm -hmm. yes, in her eyes. So this place has been really uh, a point of um, prayer, I can say. People, they come, they want to know more about Sister Anne Ali. Mm -hmm. Uh, our, spe our special mission, uh, our connection with the Blessed Sacrament, yes. Do you think there might be another reason why she was bleeding every Thursday? Someone who is skeptical out there might say, oh, maybe it's a condition that probably was causing this to happen. In mm -hmm. your opinion, why do you think this was happening? Yeah, you know, these are spiritual issues. Eh? Yeah. And, uh, I think she was so connected with Jesus. And Jesus also, she, if you read the dif divine appears, she talks of uh, he, has, he is always in in pain yeah. because of the sin that people are committing. People they have refused to change their ways. People they continue they receive you know, the blessed sacrament without really proper preparation. There are so many abuses about the Eucharist, and you know all this uh, makes Jesus to, to to shed. First of all, Jesus is also uh, Jesus appeared to her. Uh, in tears of blood mm -hmm. and finally there's, there's a connection between Jesus shedding tears of blood and also sister Anna shedding tears of blood mm -hmm. because the Lord is as uh, she was asking her that you know pray you need to pray you need to spend more time in you know in in in, in, in the chapel praying for the conversion of souls mm -hmm. and Jesus is in pain and I think also that uh, the blood that she was uh, she was bleeding, or the tears that was coming from sister, it was not her own blood. Oh. Yeah, there is, a, if you read the Divine Appeal uh, in Rome, they, 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 they were able to, to, to check on that. And the, the blood, it was very different from how uh, her own. Yes. Wow. So that explains something about her connection and, and Jesus in the Blessed Sacrament. Mm -hmm. yeah. For so many people who are suffering, whether it's physical, spiritual, emotional, come to Jesus. Yes, he, he heals us. He, he is the healer. He is. Yes, yes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Have you experienced some of these miracles that you're talking about that people have come here with needs, physical challenges, and they have walked out of here healed? Have yes, you I mean, sure I have seen, seen uh, um, like the lady who came for the memorial last year, mm -hmm and was healed and left her crutches. The crutches you've seen there at the grave. Yes, that's an amazing story. But also, you know, also with the vigils that you have every month, there are amazing stories, people experiencing providence, people experiencing healing, people who are praying for jobs and got them. Yes, I think you could just sacrifice a little, come and spend a night in prayer and really sincerely speak to God and to see the results in your life.
there was something to see I could see for myself. So I didn't want to ask question. Mm -hmm. Only one time I remember when we were in Bishop Corinne's place, the late Bishop Corinne, one time I remember. She, I, I had visited her and uh, where your sister was sleeping, there were two rooms. It was op uh, opposite to the room that she was sleeping. I had been given also a place I slept there. So on that day, sister never used to allow people to work in her house. She could not allow you to work mm -hmm. on that day. It was a special day for prayers that day. So that day I could not wash. So I just stayed in my bedroom. I got tired of staying there. So I decided to enter in her room. So I found her full of blood, tears of blood. It was on a Thursday. So I just, because I knew uh, there was a table there with the Eucharist. So I knelt down and adored Jesus. Akaniambia ananipa ruhusa ya kuwa ni kiosha zile nguo zake za damu. Na ni mimi peke yangu amenipa hiyo kazi ya kuosha. Na ni kiosha ni kuwa naosha na sikia arufu ingine kama ya divai. Mm. Arufu yenye siya kawaida. Jumi na juu arufu ya damu na hiyo nasikia ni kama si, sijui kama naweza fafanua nzuri kama hiyo ya, ya, ya rose flower. Mm. Nasikia arufu nzuri. Sasa hiyo damu ni kuwa na muliza na muaga wapi. Alikuwa na niambia ni chukue tu yuweke mahali ya tajua penye atamuaga. So the next day, you know, on a Friday, you could not tell that she was, she was shedding those tears of blood. She, after she had wiped her tear, she had washed her face. She looked, she, it's like she used to get renewed. Uh, so when I shared with her, I told her sister, yesterday I came to your room and I prayed while I was kneeling there. I experienced a very special perfume. She told me Jesus was there. Wow. Mm. So, anyway, I was just happy I had that. Yes, <laughs> um, so that's something I, I'll never forget what she told me. Tell me what it takes for somebody to be to be canonized as a saint. Mm. Why does the Catholic Church do this? Well, um, as you realize, even when you read the New Testament, yeah. you find that we read St. Paul and the first Christians, they were calling themselves saints. Yeah. And who is a saint? A saint is somebody really who, um, who loves the Lord and who... Um, who follows the way of Jesus Christ and who, who is also experiencing you know, the, the, the fullness of Christian life. So, um, so all of us actually, as Christians, we are going to be saints, mm -hmm. uh, that we live our lives in, in such a way that we can be canonized when we die. So, so all of us, in fact, the church always teaches that all of us, all, all Christians are called to be saints. Mm -hmm. But of course, there are those who really emerge, and you can already see uh, that they are living their lives in a very heroic way. Yeah. And you can see those virtues, uh, you know, somebody who's prayerful, somebody who's uh, really committed to the Christian faith, somebody who, uh, we can say he or she is a man of God. Mm -hmm. So, so any, anybody, who really follows Jesus Christ is called to be a saint and we are actually supposed to live our lives in such a way, in such a way that we become saints. Right. Um, of course, it is the church uh, who, uh, which declares somebody a saint. It's not, uh, it's not that somebody just uh, comes out and says, I'm a saint, mm -mm. but the church looks at the life of that person, a life of piety, prayer, the way she's related, related with people. Mm -hmm. uh, maybe your she has manifested virtues like humility, you know, full of hope, full of love. Uh, for example, here in Kenya, we are already, uh, the process of canonizing a Cardinal Maurice Otunga Otunga, has yeah. already begun. And Maurice, uh, Cardinal Maurice Otunga was a very humble, and symbol uh, bishop cardinal and so people would see that there was something special his, his total commitment to the church 
Uh, so, so already uh, that process has begun. Is there anything you feel is absolutely important for you to mention in this documentary with, uh, as pertains mm. to Sister Anna Ali that is absolutely important? Well, yes. what I would want to say is, mm -hmm. is that uh, this is uh, an experience we are all going through. Yeah. This is something which, even in Kenya, we have never seen this. I mean, I talked earlier about a mystic, somebody you know, was really very close to God. Yeah. And so uh, we are, we, that's things are, I can say things are unfolding. Every year, if you see the number of people during, uh, usually there is, uh, on the feast of uh, what you call Corpus Christi, mm -hmm. the body and the blood, blood of Christ, Christ. Mm -hmm. we all converge in Burn Forest. Uh, this has been a tradition. Because as I said again, she is Sister Anna Ali of the Eucharist. So during that uh, solemnity of Corpus Christi, we pray there. And you see the number of people just growing every year. Wow. Every year. And it's not only people from Kenya, people mm -hmm. from Tanzania, from Rwanda, from Uganda, from many, many parts. Mm -hmm. So people come there. And definitely if there was nothing, people could not come there. True. People come because they have experienced the powerful intercession of Sister Anna Ali. So for me, I'm saying we are really grateful to God, even as a diocese, that uh, we can say we are the custodian now of, of this place where Sister Anna Ali is buried. Mm -hmm. And we have actually, as uh, you mentioned earlier, that we have created that place as a Eucharistic center right. because it is associated with Sister Anna Ali of the Eucharist. And during that day, we normally have procession of the Blessed Sacrament, mm -hmm. and, uh, and it's wonderful when you just see the faith uh, of the people. Yeah. So, um, as a diocese, we have already identified that place as, as a place of pilgrimage, where people can go uh, to pray. Mm -hmm. Yes. And we already have uh, a priest who is now working there full time. And Father Philip Kimayo is mm -hmm. here is the priest I've appointed uh, to be there. And it's also one of those also collecting the testimonies of people who come there. Mm -hmm. Yes. Awesome. Sister Anne Ali was so particular about the Eucharist, about ah. adoration, about really uh, people knowing that Jesus is truly present in the Eucharist. Mm -hmm. So that was our message that Jesus is present in the Eucharist. And so she was telling people, uh, they don't have to go far, you know, to experience the presence of Jesus. They go to the Eucharist. Uh, they go and adore Jesus in the Eucharist. They go and receive Jesus because the Eucharist is the body and blood of Jesus Christ. So, and our Lord himself says that whoever uh, is my body will have life and have it to the full. So I would like to really uh, echo the same message of Sister Anna Ali, that we are so fortunate to have the Eucharist, because it's Jesus himself. Yeah. And he's the one who wanted it that way, because he's giving us his life. So he's the source of our life. The Eucharist is the source and summit of Christian life. So let us appreciate the Eucharist. And our, as Christians, let us always you know, prepare ourselves well so that we may receive Jesus in the Eucharist. So there's nothing really which is connected with Sister Anne Ali, which is outside the teachings of the church. And that's why uh, we would really like, and we are praying that one day she'll be declared a saint. Thank you so All much. Right. There have been various accounts of individuals, including Catholic nuns, who have claimed to have seen Jesus or photographed him. However, this is considered a matter of personal faith. And for Sister Anna Ali, we can only wait for the conclusion of the ongoing investigation. For Tuko Reports, my name is Yvonne Kawira.